Hello everybody. In this video, we will learn how to calculate capacitors and inductors in series or parallel. So now in this section, we should already know how to calculate resistors in series and parallel. So if you haven't if you if you don't know, then you can check out the video linked in the description. But first and foremost, resistors in series and parallel. When we have resistors in series, to recap, our equivalent resistance will be this type of formula, where you have uh, the addition of all these resistors add up together, and then you get your equivalent resistance. When it's in parallel, then our equation will be different, where all of our resistor values will be in the not in the denominator. You add all those four terms up, and then you get our value that is also the inverse of this addition. So add all these four terms up, and then you divide it to get our equivalent resistance. So now, moving on, let's see the idea of how we will be able to compute our equivalent capacitors when it's in series and parallel. So if, when it's in series, our equation will look like this, where you have the first term C1, and now we have to divide it along with C2, C3, C4 and our equivalent capacitance will be the inverse of these four terms added up together. So there we go. That's simply what our equivalent capacitance will be when it is in series. Now when it's in parallel, our equivalent resistance is the opposite. So we have our equivalent capacitance, and we simply add them all up in the numerator. And that's it for our uh, series in parallel when we're trying to add capacitance up in a circuit. Let's move on to our inductance and our, in and our inductors. So to calculate our equivalent inductance, we have to add these four terms up. And it's simply the same formula as the resistors. So we have all these four terms added up in the numerator again. And our equivalent inductance will be this. For our inductance when it's in parallel, our inductor values will be the denominator. And our equivalent inductance will be in the, de in the denominator also. So adding all these four terms up, I'm going to repeat that the seventh time already, that we're going to divide that to get our equivalent inductance. Now that we've understand both of the formula to calculate our capacitors and inductance when it's in series and parallel, let's do a numerical question. So here we have this problem right here to find our equivalent capacitance given the values of C1, C2, C3, and C4. So we have this C1 and it's in series by these three different capacitance that is connected differently from one another. We have C3 and C4 in series and then we have those, we have those two capacitors in parallel with C2 and then that all together, those three capacitance is in series with C1. So this might seem complicated at first since I've 
just summarize what the circuit would look like, but let's decompose it into step by step so that you can understand how we could calculate the equivalence, equivalent capacitance in the end. So first, let's calculate C3 and C4. It seems like they're more simpler to decompose it first. So we have C3 and C4, they're in series, and what we know is that when capacitance is in series, we have to compute this formula. So 1 over C3 plus 1 over C4, that would get the total capacitance of these two capacitors in series, and we can name that C5. And that C5 is simply 1 over C5. So let's add these two terms up, and what we get is 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. And what we get is 2. And then C5 will then be equal to 1 over 2 microfarads. So we get 1 over 2, and now this C5 is in parallel with C2. So now that since it's in parallel, we can add these two capacitors up. So let's highlight that. And that could be C6. So C6 is equal to the parallel of C2 and C5 together. So all we need to do is add these two terms up in the numerator. And what we get is 2 plus 1 over 2. And that is equal to 3, 5 over 2 microfarads. Now C6 is in series with C1, which is 5 microfarads. So what that means is that we have to put them in the denominator, and then we have to find the inverse of that to get our equivalent resistant, equivalent capacitance, I'm sorry. So that is equal to 1 over CQ, CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C6, and that is equal to... 1 over 5 plus 1 over 5. So we have to flip those, uh, flip this fraction up. So we have to switch the denominator into the numerator and then the numerator into the denominator. That is why I have a times 2 here. So that answer, what we get is 3 over 5. And C, the equivalent capacitance will be equal to 5 over 3. So that's our final answer. Now moving on to our inductance numerical example. So we have the same formula right here, same circuit, but instead they're now inductance compared to what they used to be, which was capacitance. So let's calculate these values and find the equivalent inductance. So first we have L3 and L4, they're in series of one another. So let's count decomposite these two inductance first, and we can name this L5. So L5 is equal to the series of L3 and L4. And that's in the uh, we're using we're taking that equation where they're in the numerator. So we have L3 plus L4. What we get is one plus one, and that is two H. So we, now we got what L5 is. Now we have L2 in parallel with L5. And 
that is equal to L6. So we can name that L6. So L6 is equal to parallel of these two inductors. So what we get is 1 divided by these two terms added up together. So first, what we get is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5. Oh, 1 over 2 as well. 1 So now we got what L6 is. Now to find our equivalent inductance, we get is what we get is the series of L1 and L6 together. L1 is equal to 5, L6 is equal to 1. And in the end, we get 6H. So there we have it. This is a simple video on how to calculate capacitors and inductors in series or parallel, given two numerical examples. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.